Hello everyone, I'm Railcoon and welcome to another edition of the Community Spotlight. For tonight's show, you had the choice between Kamiko and Iconoclasts. And it was a really close to the vote there for a while, but Kamiko wound up pulling ahead right at the end of the vote and held on to it right at the end. So we've got Kamiko on, and since it's a rather short game with multiple characters, we have some runs showing off the different characters for you today. Uh, we're going to be featuring runs and com that are going to be run and commentated by Air Angel, Repent MF, MD Mason85, and Sanic. Before we get started, we do have some quick announcements to go over for upcoming GQ and Hotfix announcements. Awesome Games Done Quick 2020 submissions will be opening August 22nd and will run through September 2nd. The Frame Fatale schedule is out, and you can find that at gamesdonequick.com slash framefatale. That'll be running from the 18th to the 22nd. The Games Done Quick Express games list is out as well. You can find that at gamesdonequick.com. The Sprint tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern is going to have a special guest host, so make sure you tune in for that. And Wednesday, we're going to have a big Harry Potter birthday celebration at 2 p.m. Eastern. Well, one final thing to announce is that the Disability Month submissions are open. You can find the form on our Twitter, at GamesDoneQuick. So, coming up for our first race, actually, it's going to be Uzume 100% between Air Angel and Sanic. Uh, Air Angel, Sanic, uh, how did you two find out about this game? Hi, um, so I am actually fairly new to speedrunning, but last year I watched a couple players run for the first time and I wanted to give it a go, and I was recommended this game as a somewhat short run, and it's uh, definitely my vibe. It's The art is very beautiful and the music is on point. And uh, the more I played it, the more I loved it. So this is actually my very first speedrunning game. What about you, Senek? I bought it on an eShop sale. It was like a book, the game. And I really started speedrunning it in a 12-hour challenge. And I loved the game as soon as I started playing it. What about this game's uh, speedrun attracts you to it? Or MD Mason. Um, so I just <clears throat> really enjoyed the movement. My favorite run coming up later, Hinome 100%, and a really fun game that I was able to find strats and like push the category for, which I really enjoyed. So. Repent was actually one of the people that brought this to my attention. So, Repent, what really keeps you coming back to this game and makes you want to keep playing it? So, I picked up the game probably right around when it came out in April of 2017. And I didn't really think much out of it at first. I just kind of played it and I was like, this is kind of fun. Um, but as I played it more and more and I saw the, uh, the Discord for the speedrun community show up, it was in my uh, Twitter feed. I was just like, wow, this looks like it could be really fast. And it, it's just like Mason said, to me, it's like there's that casual vibe. It's like got the really old school Zelda feel, even if there's not that many puzzles or that many levels. But then at a speed running level, it's just like the movement can be so crisp and the attacks, most of the attacks on all the characters are really fast. So it can be optimized super duper super duper crazy so it's just about pushing the characters to their limits all right is there anything for air angel and sanic is there anything you two want to cover before we get started on your race just want to wish you good luck to our angel oh you too all right seems like we're good to go we're gonna be starting off uh, like we said, with an Uzume 100% race between Air Angel and Sanic. So if both of you are ready, I can give you a countdown. Yeah. Alright, so let's get started in 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> oh, Sanic having trouble with the menu. Yeah. So the game is run in Japanese because any language other than English is too text, 
text boxes faster than the other versions. Just a quick note right there. Yeah, and uh, Uzume is a ranged character with some arrows. She can shoot one, two, or three arrows at a time. Um, and so you really have to watch out for how far away you are from each enemy before you shoot, and that makes this run actually pretty much the most unique run in the entire game, I would say, in terms of uh, strategy. It definitely feels like the most challenging. Yeah. Hey, the two main things, if you really want to, uh, at the base level of this game are the SP meter and just the movement in general. The movement, um, explanatory, you obviously want to make sharp turns. Uh, you don't want to take too many hits. You want to make the most, most direct line you can. But the SP meter is really where the challenge comes in. But it, as you'll see, it's in the top left corner, and you start with a max of 200, and that'll go up as you get items. But in order to get the SP meter, you have to get a combo going. The faster you build up SP meter. And another way to get to a full SP meter, as you just saw, was a death. Yeah, that was a death skip. That used to be filled with them in every category. But as better combos uh, and better combo routing have been figured out, the amount of deaths has really been brought down. Yeah, if you'll notice, um, Sanic actually is not going for the death abuse. He actually comboed his way over to Shrine 1 and is bringing the key to its first door. Um, death abuse on Uzume is actually not that bad of an idea because her attacks are a little bit slower than the rest of the cast. But at the same time, um, it, it can be useful. To, to bring out the death abuse. And you'll see the first uh, SP upgrade here. Now the max SP for Air Angel is 225. And that can be very uh, SP routing when, once you get more, which makes the 100% very different than the any percent. Yeah. Uh, the SP really matters a lot more, surprisingly, in the 100% run because you you have to combo a little bit differently. You have to focus on where am I going to get this energy from. And you just saw Air Angel pick up the first secret. And those secrets will fill 100% of your health, 100% of your SP. Oh. With the 100% run. That was an unfortunate orb drop. When um, you're carrying an item in the game, you are restricted to only moving. You can't actually interact with anything except for where the item is supposed to go, and you can't attack either. So um, Sanic got hit and dropped the orb, so now he has to make his way back, pick it up, put it down again. Um, Air Angel is about to enter the first boss of the game. I'm pretty sure they have both been getting all the upgrades, so I don't think there's any trouble there. Angel's picking up the two free upgrades. Um, and Sanic is approaching the last upgrade of... So Forest is... The Forest boss is relatively straightforward. Um, you stand in order to... Us to jump on the little buttons you see there. And once all the buttons are pressed, he shoots out a weak spot and You'll, you'll have to count how many, uh, because it'll be the fifth uh, circle to appear will be where the weak spot will end up. Air Angel with a good first hit on the boss fight. Yep, she's got a pretty good cycle going on. She only did, I think, two jumps, one jump, two jumps, and then one jump. So she's got the or, uh, two, one, one, one. She's got the best pattern right now. Um, basically, each jump costs a pretty decent amount of time when the runs are uh, becoming this optimized. The first cycle, each jump wastes probably a second, maybe a second and a quarter. Second jump costs 0.75 seconds, and then the third cycle, all of his jumps, all of the extra jumps costs you about half a second. So it, it adds up really quick. Yeah, so Aaron, you'll get a few extra jumps here, but not taking any damage and not having any extra uh, missed buttons. 
That is a very important thing to note is that she is not taking any damage. That that will help you so much later on. So you don't have to route in more HP. And this is the run with the most HP and that can help out sometimes, but it, it's also good to just keep yourself limited and make sure you know what your limits are. Especially with Uzume, because Uzume's attacks come out very much slower than the other characters and can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. Air Angel entering level two Second and one. yeah, Sanic, I believe on the final phase of the first boss. So not too far apart. It's been pretty good. Activating that first shrine. So if just like in the first level, to, in order to beat the level, you have to unlock all four shrines and uh, then the boss portal opens up. And then 100% you also have to grab the secret um, which heals you, and then the health upgrade and the SP upgrade. But one of the bigger item carries here. Right. Yeah, this is one of the longer ones. Some some spawns can really mess you up here. So even though she's out of there, I, I've had it before where there's a, a spawn right before this drop that can really mess you up. She didn't have anything too crazy there, so it's good luck there. Spawns are completely random. Um, there are a few places where you can avoid the in avoid the enemies from spawning by hugging a wall or going at the right angle. But for the most part, you just have to be prepared for whatever spawns come your way. Yeah, uh, most of the time uh, they seem completely random. The only real things that you can do are look for where the enemy spawn zones are and try to not step into one. Other than that, there's not really any RNG manipulation that we've found so far. All right, so Air Angel opening second shrine. Yes. Um, movement is if you move diagonally in this game with a D-pad or something like that, you will move much faster than if you move with a control stick at an angle. Much of uh, both these runners, I believe, use all D-pad movements. So you'll see when they go diagonal, they appear to go very fast. Yeah. It's about uh, about 150% faster than if you were to go diagonals with um, the control stick, which that adds up to. Um, that being said, moving while running with the D-pad and diagonals is very, very fast. And sometimes with the RNG spawns, it can be hard to react, especially with a character like Uzume. You just saw Air Angel go across the bridge. And there is actually a skip where you trigger the bridge cutscene, uh, and then you pause, and that allows you to move during the bridge cutscene, and you can cross the bridge. And that saves eight seconds, but uh, it's, a miss costs about 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, so respectable in a race to not risk it. Uh, we'll see if. And it goes for it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I talked to Air Angel a little bit before and she said she wanted to learn it, but I think she said she was going to wait until after the race to go for it. And that's completely understandable because, like you said, you can definitely lose probably 10, 11 seconds from it. Our seeing Santa go for it doesn't look like he. Uh, uh, he got the movement slightly wrong. So yeah. you want to go down, down right, right, and then up right, and then you'll be... Let's see if he gets it this time. Looks or like did he even, did he he even go for it? Uh, it looks he, like he unpaused too early. Yeah, he unpaused too early. I gotcha. But uh, he should be able to get across there. Opens the treasure chest. He's unlocking that chest to get some... Uh, I guess out of the way, so he just needs less later on. Mm-hmm. Angel getting the last uh, upgrade needed for head on to the boss room. Yep, she's on her way. Really good on health. Um, but sanic has been pretty good on health as well. I saw at one point in time he had about three, which is a little low for 100%, but I think he brought it back. Yeah, getting the both of the upgrades before the second boss. Health upgrades are both very late in every single level. 
So you really don't get those two health upgrades until right at the same time. Now this boss uh, that Air Angel is on now and that Sanic is about to come up on can be a little troublesome in the PC version. It looks like she didn't get the glitch, so that's, that's a very good thing. Um, if you stand a little too close to him in the PC version of the game, you can um, either... It's, it's one of like three things. You can either uh, despawn phase two, you can despawn phase two and soft lock the game, or you can uh, skip the entire phase two and three altogether. Boss right there from Angel. Yeah, that was pretty good. Move on to the third level. So what's the San difference between the 100% run? Like, what what is ex being done extra to qualify for 100%? It's um, the upgrades, yeah. Go ahead. The secret that Sanic just grabbed is not required for 80%, but uh, they're actually useful in just about every level. Sometimes not useful in Labyrinth, which is the level Angel is on. It's usually not useful in Forest, but the other, the big thing is these uh, these upgrades right here, these SP upgrades and the health upgrades that you get both in the level and right before the boss room, because they're very slow to get, uh, and in the boss room even, they just aren't worth getting. So you pretty much ignore everything. Uh, you finish the game with four health and a max of 200 SP in the any percent run. Yeah, because uh, movement is so important, we pretty much try not to go for anything that isn't required to finish the level in any percent. So it uh, looks like there was an orb drop right there. She missed the A press. She was probably slightly off of the pedestal. Um, but yeah, just anything that isn't movement, attacking, or item grabs, we usually try to cut out of uh, any percent. So that's that's pretty much the difference, is collecting all secrets and all the health and SP upgrades. That actually does give you a little more wiggle room, though, that being said, um, because a big thing, it's, it's a very good beginner speedrun, but a big thing that new players uh, struggle with sometimes is being able to stay alive during the any percent run. You only get four health and collecting anything from a health pot is not exactly fast. One thing uh, that Labyrinth introduces to the game is kill rooms. Uh, we just saw Angel go through one and we'll see Sanic approach it in a little bit. But kill rooms are rooms where enemies spawn once you enter them and you cannot leave until you kill all the enemies. So that's yes. um, um, something that we mentioned earlier. Uh, Mason brought up is the uh, the bridge skip that we were talking about uses a cutscene skip, and that's actually pretty important for a lot of cutscenes in the entire game. You can actually skip the um, the gate transition. You saw Sanic just do it right now. Um, he missed it. So he was able to. Start... What was that? It looked like he unpaused too early. The thing about cutscenes in this game, I, th is I think he got it, but yeah. Uh, well, if basically if you pause the game while a cutscene is triggered, you just are able to move during the cutscene. Useful in a lot of ways. Is, it like, is he going? Oh. That's that's very interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. He also went for a. Um, a cutscene skip during the the bridge animation, which is something that we try to do during 100%, but he is going for this very early. Looks like he's not going for it anymore. He's just gonna get the health grade, uh, health upgrade as intended. This bridge skip is much more difficult than the one in Relics. Yeah, as it actually, see. yeah, it's it's a lot harder. The timing is much tighter. The, uh, the reason being is because the way that the cutscene skip works is you're allowed to move during the time that the cutscene would be taking place. But, um, yeah, he did. He was just a little bit off. I think it was because he was using cardinals instead of his diagonals. I'm getting some health. That's a good, good save yeah, right there. Definitely. Now, Air Angel seems to have quite a good lead now. Um, She'll probably be going for that same health upgrade in just a second. But she's done with shrine number four. There he goes. D he does the uh, D-pad movement and gets it easily. Did he do bridge skip? I was watching Angel's screen. 
Oh, I didn't do bridge skip, but he did do the movement with. Gotcha. It is so early, he does have to redo this kill. Oh, I didn't even think about that, yeah. This is to redo kill room one to progress. Uh, Labyrinth is a little bit like... Uh, level four is very linear, but um, level three and level two are as well. Um, there's a very specific sequence that you have to do things in for level three to be completed at all. Casual playthrough, it's really interesting to figure out the order. Um, but then the speed run, the route is pretty much set in stone because of the game wants you to progress through the levels. Right. At that point, you would just be wasting time if you if you looked for any kind of um, variation. Not not to say that the path is completely figured out, but just we don't have any wall jumping or any kind of glitches like that yet that uh, can really buy us any kind of extra movement. So we have to play the game as intended. So a Angel comes into the boss fight with full health, which is very important. Yes. Because as Azume, this boss fight can get very tricky. This boss is a variation on the theming for level three. It's, uh, it's actually just one big kill room. You just destroy all the enemies and eventually the weak point for the boss will show up. Um, the reason that's difficult uh, is because she's a ranged character and the room is very small. Even though it's large horizontally, the attacks that the boss has makes it very hard to maneuver pretty much at all. Doing a you see, very good job so far. Yeah, you see Air Angel kind of hanging back at the stairs. Using that invincibility from the special attack, which we haven't talked about yet, remind me to talk about that in a second. Uh, using the invincibility so she doesn't get hit by the mobs that are going to come after her. Um, you want to explain special attacks? So special attacks are something you get when you have uh, at least 50 SP. If you hold down the attack button, you will see the, a blue circle come around your character. And as soon as that circle reaches like the, your character, then you release it. And each character has their own unique special attack. And it's required to be the final boss in the game and can be very useful for any areas you have to kill a lot of enemies at once. That's a oh, super... Cool. Yeah, we're on to ruins now. That was a super cool um, strat. I don't... I should have thought of it before, but um, I saw Sanic stand on the other side of the push block and shoot the rocks to destroy them. I think that's probably standard, but I play so little Izume that I just didn't think of it. I actually... Have not gone with that. <clears throat> that's a very, is, isn't it smart? <laughs> it's super yeah, smart. So both Sanic and Angel are some of the few uh, few people in the community who started with Uzume. Character you start with, you kind of you view the game from that character's kind of point of view. Uh, and picking up other characters is very different than if you started with one of those characters. It's it's interesting how little they the devs really had to change about their move kit, but they all feel completely different. Like um, Uzume works really well as a hundred percent tank. Uh, Hinome has these geometric angles of attack that you probably wouldn't be able to see in a a normal top down two D puzzle game. And Yamato is just a truck destroying everything in her path. Good way of putting that, yeah. So now we have probably the biggest item carry in the game here with this key. This key is a run killer uh, for PB attempts because... Yeah, if you, if you drop this key at the door, it wastes, I think, round trip uh, both ways is 18 seconds. So it is very important that if you drop it, you have to drop it early. Don't, don't mess up halfway through, don't mess up at the door. There's some nice dodges there. Oh, close calls. Yeah, very, very close calls. That wasn't a great spawn, so she handled that really well. She, she went, um, one of the safer things you can do is spawn enemies beforehand with item carries. Because they can just be brutal sometimes. So now we use some range attack to unlock this uh, SP upgrade from the vending machine. Of 
It looks like Sanic is just finishing up the third boss. Both both seem to be having very clean boss fights so far. I can't believe he didn't get hit by that. Did you see all of the um, fire bugs right next to him? He didn't get hit. And the boss spawned right there for him. That's that is a very very good boss yeah. fight for Sanic there. Right Definitely behind, well deserved. He is he is really showing off some cool stuff. You can tell he knows the character well. Well, the, the, there are two kill rooms in both Labyrinth and in Ruins. Uh, in Labyrinth, you only have to do each kill room once if you route it correctly. But in Ruins, in 100%, you have to do each kill room three times. A good, fast way to uh, get through the kill room is very important. Another thing I should mention about enemy spawns, because um, as you see, you, you saw Sanic, he left a few enemies alive. Uh, enemies will only spawn once you leave the area after killing every single enemy. So if you leave one enemy alive, there will be no new enemy spawns the rest of that level, unless you uh, unless you die, in which case all enemy spawns will. Yeah, it's really important to leave an enemy alive just because, um, like we said, especially for Uzume, who is super duper read heavy kind of play style. Um, reacting yeah. to the spawns is not a fun situation. So you wanna leave them uh, alive, leave at least one enemy alive. That way later on when you have to come back inevitably, you don't have to worry about, oh man, I just ran into them. I just dropped this orb. I just dropped this key. I just wasted 18 seconds. Air Angel That's especially I feel has done a really good job of setting things up beforehand so that she doesn't have to worry about spawns or um, about some of the more random elements of this. And that's, I think, very key for a race, especially with someone like Kuzume, where health is a bigger issue, sometimes comboing can be a bigger issue. Yeah. So, Angel playing it very safe, and I think that's a big reason why she has such a big lead right now. She's um, going for a lot of SP gathering, too. She looks like, I think she wants... What is she at? 130? I think she was trying to get to 150. Um, yes, that way she can get the door as well as the shrine. Looks like she was a little bit short. Sanic just getting done with his first shrine of the level. Looks like his key carry was not too much of a problem. A little while ago it looked like Air Angel was having a little bit of trouble with the spawn right before that door. Uh, that ruins Definitely has some killer spawns. Ruins has the worst spawns of the game. The enemies actually move a little bit differently. So if you noticed, the pig-like monsters, the Dramos, are pretty common throughout each level. I think the only area that doesn't have them is uh, the Labyrinth. And in each level, they have a little bit faster speed. I don't know if their movement is more erratic, but they definitely move a little bit faster, which makes them spawning and being able to move as soon as they spawn that much more dangerous. Air Angel coming for the last uh, upgrade here. Oh, got a strange little bug there. Had to reshoot one of the vending machines to make the upgrade appear. She shot right in the middle of two of them. Deactivated one, activated the other. Coming into the kill room for the second time, Air Angel is just about uh, ready to move on to the final boss fight. Looks like she doesn't get the secret right there. She'll have to get that on the return trip through. Definitely. It's actually probably, it's pretty smart to uh, hang on to as much SP as you can for afterwards. If she got the secret beforehand, she would have to use some of it for the shrine, use some of it for, for the door. Maybe you're thinking is that she doesn't want to waste any. Oh. <laughs> I don't think she grabbed it. I'm not sure, though. I did. Oh, you did? Oh, you did. Awesome. Upgrade, probably. Yeah, I was a <laughs> think... so sorry. That's all I'm no. going to say. <laughs> I, th I think we just missed it. <laughs> Uh, that is uh, something that um, 
you probably see more with Azume than the other characters because you really need that. Uh, you really want your special attack for many times as you can. Um, it's not as necessary with the other characters, so sometimes you can get through the first uh, room without get through the room once or twice without the special. And just another character difference that you'll see here, and you'll see the other characters and how they approach the end of this game as well. Yeah, each character has their own little safe zone that they kind of want to go to and um, a strategy that they kind of want to implement. So these orbs that are appearing on the boss right now, they were random spawns. So Uzume being a long range character that she is, the arrows going across the screen, infinite distance basically. It's a very good strategy to just hang in the corner and shoot wherever. Very little movement that really needs to go on. Missed the first cycle, but got it on the second way um, this orb this next orb for the final phase of um, the final boss goes right and then left and right so you want to hit it as soon as possible pretty much as soon as it comes out Panic hitting all three yeah that was, <laughs> he used that was the enemies big. to waste the first three arrows so his last three could hit the vending machine super cool that was, that was nice having a very clean boss fight onto the final boss of the game. Um, very clean run. It's um, definitely, definitely going to be... 100% Uzume is the boss fight. Um, probably the easiest boss fight to, to, to do well, uh, simply because you can just stand at the back, uh, build up your combo, which is all you need, because you have to use special attacks health is just should be fine for this so already got a combo yeah, of 47 for, going for as much trouble as uh uzume has on some of the bosses uh phase one of the final boss and phase two are pretty easy that's pretty laid back sanic coming into the first boss here i think that uh, it looks like uh sanic is just one health short i'm not sure where you missed that um, but Air Angel, is, we're about to come on time as soon as this last cut. Uh, this last shrine gets shrine. activated. So three, two, one, stop. Nice. Twenty-seven, thirty-seven. I'm pretty that. sure <laughs> that's seven seconds off of her PB, I believe. Yeah, um, I actually just got. Uh, the 2730 PB today. <laughs> so this is actually a very good time for me anyways, because this is only the second time I've ever gotten in the 27, so. That's amazing, that's Ooh, awesome. Congrats on the run, congrats on the win. Yeah, nice job. Yeah, I Sanic. didn't breathe during that whole time, so if I sound out of breath, that's probably <laughs> why. <laughs> you did great. Oh, thanks. Sanic like, is coming Sanic in is... the phase two. Uh, oh, he's on phase three now of the first part of the final boss. I actually can't wait to watch the VOD because it sounds like he's done some very interesting things that I really want to look at. Um, I actually uh, just started de rusting this not too long ago, so a lot of like the tips and tricks, like the bridge skips and stuff like that, I still have to learn. Sanic's done some stuff I've never seen before, which... Yeah was cool to see. He definitely has the potential to get some really good times. Um, he's relatively new to 100%. He's done a lot of a pretty decent time in there. So, A lot of the routing that he did seemed a little bit off of tradition, but um, so, some of the tricks, like with the bidding machine or the, the rocks right before the Shrine 3 and Labyrinth are it's things I've absolutely never seen before. Very cool. So he's on the third phase of the final boss. This phase can be kind of tricky for some of the characters, but if you just keep firing arrows as Azume, some of them will come through and hit the... It's actually super interesting to note, each of those circles on those worms are uh, their own hitbox. It's not one giant hitbox kind of waving in and out. So if you are precise enough and if you are feeling risky, you can walk right through them. It's also to note, I seem to have skipped a lot of the phases at the boss. Did you guys notice that? 
Uh, which boss? The final boss. I didn't do two of the like the two of the phases like didn't happen. Which ones was it? Um, the um, the, the worm. The little yeah, like the so the final the the final boss in the final room. You know where he where it goes like up and down kind of. Right. And you kind of have to sit in the middle. That one didn't happen. Neither did the. I don't think the crystal drops either. I thought I saw the diamonds, but I'm not positive. That's really interesting. That means um, because uh, like I this run would have been a lot worse if that was uh, if that happened just from like the drops in the last level. That's why I'm so surprised it was even in the 27s because like. Oh, that's super strange. Sanic oh looking like God. he missed his special. Uh, how did that miss? I don't know. Was, was it too early? It didn't look like it was. Yeah, too it early. it had to have been too early because, or there's some kind of bug, but I I doubt that. I've never seen that before, even on PC. I think that All happened right. to me if I did it too late. So if uh, if you don't coming up on time, by the way, late, yeah, and then like because you start getting hit if the laser hits you. That's awesome. What happened. I don't know. Nick with a thirty-one eleven. Still a very solid showing for him. Um, very good. He did miss one of the health upgrades. I'm not sure where. I missed the one, one sunken. The... in Sunken. I realized it's as yeah, soon as I... I got the last one. That is unfortunate. But it, the thing uh... about this run is you can't go back and get uh, things you've missed. Yeah, there's no, no way to go back, no way to level select or anything. So if you miss something, it's kind of just... Uh, reset but like i like we were saying crazy crazy strats you're you were going nuts i love it i absolutely love it okay yeah, guys like it's a showcase we have to show what this game has to offer absolutely I, that was okay, a very good showing from both players <clears throat> all right um do you guys have anything to say before we switch to break real quick um, just to everybody in chat, I see all my emotes in chat. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. Congrats to both runners. That was a very entertaining run. It's um, awesome. Pretty decent times. I mean, underestimate. Good to see. So, All right. Uh, we're going to hop to a break real quick while we swap over to MD Mason 85 who's going to do Hunome 100% for us. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes.
Welcome back everyone to the Community Spotlight. We just had a race between Air Angel and Sanic of Uzume 100% in Kamiko. And we're gonna move on to Hinome now. This is going to be a single player running this one. It's gonna be MD Mason 85 showing this off for us. And uh, before we get started on that, I just would like to remind everybody that Hotfix has been funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. We'd appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to support future broadcasts. But with that, we're going to move over to MD Mason 85. Is there anything you want to cover before we get started or just like start the run? I just want to say that, you know, thanks for having me. I am excited. This is one of my favorite runs. Um, I think my PB for this category is, in my opinion, the best speed run of any game I've ever done as far as like just execution. So I, I really like this category and I'm happy to show it off. All right, uh, if you are ready, then I can give you a countdown when you're good to go. Sounds good. All right, starting in three, two, one, go. Hanome uh, has kind of a unique weapon. Um, kind of the reason that attracted me to the character was just the, the shield is unique. Um, you have a shield toss, which just plows through enemies, and then a little dagger, which can kind of clean up the mess. Yeah, so the shield has a fixed range, but it will take any kind of analog or, uh, I guess, digital input, depending on what you're using. Um, and it'll throw it in that direction, and wherever you end up after throwing it, you're allowed to move afterwards. Um, it'll come back to you like a boomerang. So it's probably one of the coolest weapons I've seen in a top-down puzzle solver or a top-down puzzle adventure game. And then the dagger afterwards um, can only be done when um, the, he doesn't have the shield. So when the shield is out, you can use the dagger for extra damage. Um, dagger is only one damage. We didn't really talk about damage on Uzume, uh, but the shield is um, as far as we can tell, infinite damage. It will kill any of the enemies in one hit. Um, and all of the enemies in the game, the of all the enemies in the game, there's only a few that have six HP and it still one-shots those. So very, very interesting character. The dagger only does one though, I think is what I was trying to say. So if you'll notice, he, that was an amazing combo. Um, there's probably, I think eight enemies right there. He hit, I think, three or four of them with the first shield toss, ran to get the chest, or uh, ran to dagger one of them, got the chest, and then on the way back, after getting the chest, hit the remaining enemies. Such a cool character. That's a lot of I don't cool know stuff. The different characters run. You can see her little arms going. She goes so fast. Look at her. <laughs> so cute. Sorry, I don't little, get to watch her. Short on combo. <laughs> Specifically, this character, I, it's very unique. Because Azume is my main and she's my girl, but. Everyone has their favorites, so there's no no shame, no shame in that. Um, I think all of them are super duper unique. That's part of why I love this game, just taking them to their limits. It's a good uh, orb drop, good orb carry. 
They have good spawns too. Very good spawns. You really just want to keep everyone out of your way. So, uh, like we said, movement is probably one of the most important things in the game. So when stuff is obstructing your forward path, it's not a fun time. I've got to find a balance of tanking hits um, with both Uzume and Hanome. You've got to find a balance of tanking hits uh, because attacking is slow, but not taking too many hits. Yes. Take, uh, taking too many hits means that you're going to lose way too much health and... One of the sayings I like to give out is you never want to be at one health in Kamiko. It's it's just not a good idea. Even if you have a health upgrade right past one spawn of enemies, never a good idea. Unless you're going for a death abuse. But um I think uh, either my 80% or 100% has one health almost the entirety of so <laughs> that was a my you know, yeah. time. It's something that I think you probably don't want to do, but you, you can do if you are good enough. Mason is definitely If you are Mason, you best. can do it. If you're the rest of us, you'd go into <laughs> cardiac arrest. <laughs> Alright, so... Same thing going on uh, as Uzume. You just want to get the right spawn... Or not spawns, the right jumps. Um, getting too many jumps wastes your time and waste the next cycle. So you want to get to the next cycle as quickly as possible. So positioning yourself on the switches is the way to do that. Oh man, I wish I remembered. I used to be such a geek when it came to numbers for this game. I, I go away for a couple months and I don't remember all the numbers. I think it's 21 hops optimally that you want. But I don't remember. <laughs> you could be off by a couple picks one, one, one. after jump. Few of them are oh, I don't want help. Ooh, <laughs> not fun. Not a fun situation, especially going into sunken. Play risky or I play it safe. It's uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's marathon. I would say get a health pot, but it's your run. <laughs> Dude, I do death warp. It's really close to spawn point. True, death abuse would be pretty quick, but I also think I, I think it's probably about the same for health pot or a um death abuse. Probably. I think it, yeah, I think he'll be okay with two here because there's usually a uh, health that comes out of the bushes over here if he really wants it. True. And that'll be easy to pick up uh, once he has the orb in his hands. Yeah, for sure. So for those first couple of spawns, we haven't really talked about it. Um, generally what you want to do uh, coming down the left side, that first left hang, you want to just go straight down the middle, but sometimes you can't. Um, Hinome can make quick work of it. Um, Yamato even a little bit, but Yamato is so focused on movement, you really just want to be able to ignore them. Pretty, very good spawns, actually. I think he had to go around the blue Dramoses, but it's not that big of a deal. Not too much of a time loss there. So with the diagonal movement you were bringing up before, does that uh, movement speed increase also work when you're carrying items, or is it just when you're running around without them? A little bit. It's not... So it's super it's... noticeable, but... I think it's slight. Yeah, it's, it's 1.45, so about 150% um, multiplier for whatever movement you're doing. So if you're running, um, it's that, and the item grab or the item carry is um just the walking animation and the walking speed so it, it also amplifies that it's it's like angel said it's not very noticeable but it's still uh 1.45 and then actually that's a good point to bring up um it's not always the best idea to use the d-pad movement there's some scenarios where it's actually uh, better to use analog, whether it's with a tricky or risky spawn, or uh, and here's the bridge skip, I'm sorry for interrupting myself. So uh, you pause, unpause, uh, goodness. Hit the switch, pause, unpause, and the cutscene uh, happens while you're moving. 
So he was able to just skip both ends of the cutscene, the bridge appearing and the bridge going away. This character is just a friggin' bulldozer. Like, attacks everything when you're trying to go the other direction, just comes back directly. Yeah, that's... It's so awesome. It's so cool. <laughs> um, it's really unique. I don't think I could think of a game that I have played that uses kind of that tactic, so it's very, very interesting. Yeah, being able to... it's. It's almost like a math character because of all the geometry, because you have to think of where you're going to be after the hit. You have to look at what spawns are ahead of you to, to even think about that part. You have to think about what enemies you're hitting. It, oh God, all the follow-ups are crazy. Oh, that, that's a terrible it. spawn. You got it, you got it. What is a route, route difference for, for me, for Hinome versus the other characters? Usually you want to use the secret in order to have enough for this shrine. But I get the shrine first because Good enough. Because I want to use Hanome's special on the boss fight. That's right. You were telling me about the strategy before. I haven't, I haven't been able to look into it numbers wise myself. But it does seem very, very good. It's a time, it's a time save that uh, neither Uzume or Yamato, and Yamato is probably the fastest character, but it, she she can't touch it. It's using the special to hit one of the weak points early in one of the phases. Or two of the phases, I'm not sure how you do it. The other phases, it's really easy to hit them, hit them quickly, so it's not as useful. That's what I was thinking, but I wasn't sure. And because it's 100%, you uh, will still have SP left over for Labyrinth. Are you doing it now? I didn't know that. Yeah, the third, the second. Oh, phase that's the, right. Because you have. Okay, you skip. You skip a teleporter. That's very interesting. Those are really slow. The teleporters probably are uh, five seconds total travel time. Very good fight. At least. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good fight. It's really awesome that we could have OG Boss Cat in chat today. She works with the Fly High Works and Skipmore developers in the Discord. Hi, Boss Cat. <laughs> Boss Cat! Hello! Alright. We are in Scorching Labyrinth now. I'm gonna use the first part of his 106 to get that door. And we're getting the health upgrade? No, SP upgrade. I always get that wrong. And these kill rooms are, in my opinion, really hard to optimize um, for, for any character. Yeah, it was a very, very good kill room. How practiced are you on the health upgrade bridge skip, would you say? Um, just about every time I practice, but okay. still very tricky. Nice cutscene skip there, by the way. Taking out the switch first, letting that door down. Like I was saying, Labyrinth is one of the more linear levels. Um, and it doesn't seem that way at first because it is a, a, a big puzzle in and of itself. The first time you play it, where do I go? Oh, wow. Does not get hit by any of the fireballs. Swagging out. Uh, excuse me, I'm gonna walk all the way over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, the key oh. drop. Got it. Yeah, I was so about to say, I like, how do you really use the pad for... Um, so it's a bit. I'm not as good with the D pad movement, so. Um, Just because you only use them for <laughs> item carries. I feel like uh, with this character, it would be more beneficial to not use pad in terms of like the angle of attack to get the uh, shield back yeah um, it would be more difficult to control yeah it it really depends on the situation almost forgot the secret grabs it nice restore you are not gonna have a very hard time at the end of this level on SP 
Go ahead. Sorry. I think I need 21 more oh, no, level. That was really cool. Just take out all of those, all those stones there. Literally perch there for like 10 seconds just to get through it. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, the blocks are not super duper fun to take care of just because you're like, I need to go, let me, let me out. <laughs> but, um, Uzume and Hinome have some pretty cool tricks up their sleeves. Hinome with her geometry and Uzume with what we saw with, uh, Sanic, the last, last run of the race. I almost feel uh, Uzume's better for me, at least using a D-pad. Um, I personally just use a USB, like SNES plug-in, <laughs> uh, like USB controller. You can you can like line up the angles of her third arrow attack, but you have to be very linear to everything that you're trying to hit. Oh yeah. Where this, where this, you could do like circular motions and. 360 degree right. angles. Looks like you got hit. Oh, it was very close. That was really close. On the wall, I think, for a little bit. I'll go for it again. Seems like everyone's quiet. Oh, he actually got. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was so clean. Very well done. Oh, my gosh. He was actually so far ahead of it. That's one of my favorite things to see. One of my, one of my friends, he's not exactly in the community, but he calls it Jesus Walks. It's very, very interesting. You actually are walking across the bridge path because it's hurt boxes there before the animation even goes off. It's actually just an animation. The hurt boxes aren't appearing alongside the animation. It's just already there. It's all there. So if you're fast enough, you can make it look like that. It looks super cool. That's a bit easier to do in Relics, but if you do it right in uh, Labyrinth, it just works. So. Yeah, I I have never seen a Jesus Walks in Labyrinth. Very cool. It looked really slick. All right, so level three boss, uh, kill room. I actually, levels two and three, I don't really know a lot of Hanome strategies, so maybe if you could take that one. <laughs> Mason. Yeah, so really, um, because you can just hit everything at like, the same time, um, you know, you can kind of have to wait a little bit um, uh, for the final phase. As you'll see, you just use the special. Do you have to keep do your Do you have to keep your combo up for this part, or no? Um, I do for the last hit. I'll you'll see me release the combo super early. So that I hit as many as I can, so that I enter ruins with a high SP. Gotcha. But yeah, that's twenty-one coming all at you. Two fifty-one going into 15. ruins is very good. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you get fifteen combo with uh, all the enemies with your special. So that only costs you like thirty SP, and if you enter with full health and SP as you should, it's not too bad at all. Yeah. And ruins is. I think the most important part to having a good ruins. Um, because you go through this room like six times. And if enemies have to keep respawning or if there are tricky enemies in there, brutal. Yeah. It looks like you left one of the um, green angels alive, but... I think you should have enough room with the grass that you cut to make it through. Yes. Yeah, I want to rather have them already alive than have to deal with them spawning. Oh yeah. Yeah, it didn't look like I killed Very true. any of them. Promo situation. That's pretty much my whole strategy is to like not run into things. Yeah, not not run into things. Spawn them early. Just pl play it safe. Honestly. And, that, and that's not always um, the best way to do it, but for spawns, if we're talking enemy spawns, it's it's a good strategy. <laughs> Just entirely random. Like, um, I know you guys were mentioning during our race that like the first orb drop in the second level, I have literally had something spawn directly in front of it. So I, that was 
my biggest uh, flinching moment was like, please don't don't do this. The enemies by the key door are uh, by the key doors the worst. On, it... Um, but they do. They don't run towards you. They'll typically run away from you. So if there's some things you can do to maneuver with that. Yeah, I just want to bring up one more time how how cool of a customer that was. The hood appearing right in front of you, and you said, "No, I'm putting this key in the door." All right, you can have that key, uh, that shield come back and hit those two white guys that appear. That's interesting. That's neat, a neato strat. Closes the door. Yeah, this kill room you have to do. You said three times. Yeah. First two, you get a really nice setup for. The third one, you just kind of use your special for. It. Mm -hmm. Those hurt boxes for the push blocks can be really tricky sometimes. If you're just slightly out of its range, you just get an attack instead. And for Hinome or Uzume, where their attacks are very, very long, uh, probably 40 plus frames, it can be a significant time waste. Bottom. Nice cutscene skip. Just cleaning up a little. It's it's hard for me to to commentate because I never I never get to really watch Hinome up close and personal and talk about it. So I'm just kind of enveloped right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk about. That was a really good one for this. Um, that was a really yeah, good one for this. This skip I'm gonna spawn. go for right here at the end. Basically, you know, we've talked about how cutscenes. If you trigger a uh, pause during a cutscene, you can run through it. Oh you no! Trigger, <laughs> you trigger another cutscene during a cutscene that you've already paused through, you basically can skip that cutscene too. So wow. what I'm going to try and do here is basically skip five cutscenes um, in a short matter of time to get this uh, health upgrade very quickly. Um, we'll see if it works out. I'm at a good combo for it, so it should work. This is a very... I, I want to say it's a very new strat. This cutscene right here, uh, this cutscene skip right here is month a month old, and let's see, he gets it. Yeah, he gets it. Nice, very well done. So he so, initiates the special early. So by the time he gets to the room, he's hits all of out. them. So crazy! What is this? I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super unique to to Hinome, and then you can walk with the secret after that cutscene skip. Uh, you can do the same thing with that secret uh, with the health upgrade too. If you do it right, if you pause during the uh, chest upgrade, it is the, it's a pretty tight movement for that. that. That's what you shut off just now, right? Or is that something else? I missed the last part of it. I got okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I thought. Cutscene skip, and we're on to final boss. Very good timing right now. Very yes. good time. Ideally, oh my I would goodness. Want, uh, um, 350 combo here, um, because I want to have his, enter the boss fight with as little. Uh, SP as possible because Hinome's uh, special attacks. I don't know. Hinome's if... special attacks have the more, the less you have. So you really don't want to have to deal with um, the, watching the entire animation because you have to attack right out of it. Right. The, um,. The radius of the the attack is smaller, with the less SP she has. So, and, th and that's actually really important because you have to watch the entire thing happen. That was a very good cycle. Using the special to hit two orbs, I think. Yes, uh, miss... open that girl's face. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I I fight from from the side. He's just like. 
that's actually a, a safe spot as well. So the right hand corner is a safe spot for Uzume because she can shoot the arrows pretty freely. Um, right. Yamato and Hinome stick to the inner corners because it's actually the bullets are random when they come out, but they never ever hit either of those corners. So both of those are safe places. Yeah, it's just kind of a weird thing. So you'll see me in the final boss here, just try to get to 50, uh, as close to exactly 50 as I can. Pretty much all there is to this boss fight. Um, good on health. Yeah, you can see how the animation stops so much earlier because you have less SP. That's really nice. A riskier way to do it is um, you try to release it early and see if um, see if it triggers in the right time. But the the visual key for that is not um, as consistent as I would like. So I've gone for that, and if you miss it, you lose a lot of time. Go a little early on the diamonds here because the only cycle I really know. That's a pretty good safe spot right in the middle right there. Or at least I've never gotten hit by the crystals just standing in front of them. Crystals, I think, are probably the easiest of them to avoid. At this point, it's just about over, so... time in a little bit uh, as soon as last shrine there you have Hinome in 100% yeah sub 25 is reset um the attempts are usually very tight margins, and you want to play a little safer. Um, so that's that's yep. a really good run. You nailed some uh, good looking skips there. So thanks so much for that run. I got most of the skips I wanted to get. So that run for sure. Yeah, good job. Is there anything you want to cover or shout outs before we go to the break before our final run? Um, just thanks for all the support and chat and do this category um, on the stream. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, so we're going to take another quick break here, and we'll be right back with MD Mason again, racing against Repent MF for the final character, Yamato, who I believe was described as a truck. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out, and we'll be right back after this. All right, I'm sorry.
All right, welcome back, everyone. We are going to close this out with the third character. It's going to be a race again. So we just saw MD Mason with Hinome 100%. He is going to be returning to race against Repent MF as they do Yamato any percent, which should be quite a bit, uh, which should be interesting for us to see here now. And uh, both of them are getting ready for the race, so we're not going to ask them too many questions, just going to make sure they are good to go and then get this started. We'll be doing a countdown here in a moment. But thanks again for everyone who has participated and tuned in today. It's been a nice little showcase. Both players say they are ready, so let's give the th countdown. Three, two, one, go. All right, two of our best speed runners in the Discord are going head to head. Can't wait for this run, you guys. Speediest of the speedy of the speedy here today for you. So what's different about Yamato? I, I, she was described as a truck, so that I, I assume that means she just blows through enemies really easily. But what is her playstyle compared to the two? Uh, you can pretty much slash while you walk, um, like going forward. Whereas Izume, you completely stop in your tracks to hit something. And she, you could just watch her uh, one second while she goes through there. Yeah, she, look at that. Just like slash, boom, boom, boom. Just like, you're done, get out of here. Or as um, like some of the enemies takes a couple of uh, hits to, um, depending on what size uh, hitboxes they are, but just one slash and they're done. And that's pretty much the biggest thing that I noticed so far, at least with, um, Yeah, I'm seeing the truck analogy pretty easily at this point. Yeah. I wasn't entirely <laughs> certain how that was going to come through, but yeah, she seems to hit really hard and really fast, so. Really, really close race right now, both activating the very first shrine, and they're they're not doing the, uh... Because it is so easy to just get more spirit just by, well, walking and slashing, pretty much. <laughs> And both are activating the second shrine. So 44 and 46, I think. So they were very close. And depending on, I think, did it? Did Mason start a couple seconds after Repent, maybe? Uh, I wasn't looking too closely. It's hard to tell sometimes with the stream uh, delay that'll happen. If you look but... on the top of the on the top of their screens. At, that is actually the in-game clock uh, to one yeah. another. Obviously it stops during cutscenes, so that's also important to note, but they're around the same, but they're very close. How Unless much I difference does the... Drop something. Sorry, go ahead. So how much different does the ability to attack enemies while moving make the SP routing for Yamato? Um, well, so far, just from my perspective, again, Izume is my main. It's a lot it to use. It, it takes a lot of time to gather more spirit energy compared to this, uh, just because after you shoot, if after you shoot the arrow three times, you have to kind of wait till it regenerates almost. Whereas this, you could just like slash freely. What was that saying? With Yamato, you can chain a lot of, of combos just by moving and hitting with her. And this is a, an in person race, so they will be at far health the entire run. So it's pretty risky in a lot of time. Like Mason right now is with one health. If he misses anything, oh, yeah, doing the boss dies, room with one health right now. That's a big thing about any percent is you don't have a lot of health obviously you don't pick up any of the upgrades if you want to have the fastest time but that also means a lot of your race you're gonna have pretty much the whole time 
unless you decide to break more pots or something. So I guess we can expect to see just like lots of trying to carry combos through just to generate a bunch of SP throughout the levels. Yeah. Yep. A good boss fight from Repent. Like Mason's just a little bit behind. Yeah, they got desynced a little bit. I didn't see if they it was an extra jump or did you see what happened? Um, I think Mason might have dropped an orb in the beginning, so that's where he fell behind a little bit. Or he, it was either that or he didn't have enough spirit energy and he had to farm some. See if he can get back a little bit more time. See there, specifically that uh, portion where Repent just destroyed all of those bushes. Um, Azume would have had to plant herself, shoot the arrow like two to three times in order to push us out of the way, and then proceed to go forward where she just like goes and just knocks them all out and then presses the switch. That's like a three second time save. <laughs> I don't know if they, if they talked about it yet, but this bridge that they are going to cross right now, it, if you go to the left or like repent, you don't get any spawns. If you go a pixel to the right, you get two separate spawns of four mobs in, in that region. You lose a lot of time if, especially you zoom. Yamato, you can just swipe them, just swipe them out of the, the bridge. A lot, of, a lot of the movement is is based on not spawning mobs on, on certain but sometimes you need the mobs to combo. One thing that that we are trying to, to figure out is where you can and cannot spawn only Obviously two movements. And you see there he doesn't have to... oh he missed it. Chance for Mason to come back. Mason gets this on the first try. They'll be very close to one another. No, he didn't get it. Oh, he doesn't go for the skip. He can pause it too fast. Other neck and neck. Having a little trouble with that switch. It is a little bit difficult because it's like hidden behind the tree. I know when I first picked this up and played it casually, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Maison used a lot of movement to group those chasers and kill them all at once. Repent just was re hitting them like he was he's doing right now. That kind of saves a few seconds for Mason. So he his load is gains time and he recovers from the race. It should be very close at the end. But there's always runes to run any run. So what does Yamato's special do? She spins like a uh, Beyblade. It, 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 she can still move via spins. So it, it can be a lot useful in some kill rooms. But it's almost the same as her normal hit, so... You usually don't don't see it a lot. Yeah, I assume it'd be harder to fit into any percent since the SP routing seems a lot tighter as well. Yeah, they are always at at max 200. 
in every shrine you need a hundred to, to open it, so it's very tight on, on SP. The core spawns on, on this boss are, are always set, so that's not random, and they can hit at, at the first time they are. Just the first one that can be in any of the of the orbs of the, his body. The other two appearances are always set. Everything is at the first kill room. He got the cutscene skip there. Sometimes those teleporters can be a, a, a little bit tricky because you, you feel hit them but they teleport away and don't get hit. It's like their hitbox just vanishes before the actual mod. The Mason is using the special right now. You gain a lot of, a lot of speed doing diagonal movement while with the special one. What was that on Repent's side? He was carrying the key and then he paused and dropped it. I have never seen that before. I assume just a missed input or something? I'm not sure. He forgot to um, oh, slash through the, the snow because, because you, can't, uh, you can't use your weapon while carrying things. Okay, I see. It's almost like muscle memory betrayed him. That can definitely happen. So used to going and grabbing the chicken here. Like, don't go grab the chicken. Grit in the wall. Dead. It makes me a little sad. What I usually do in many percent runs, I, I hit those health, health up help health pickups and then come back for them later so just I can yeah, go to the boss for sense. health Mizon did a death, death skip to refuel, death refuel so he doesn't need to combo a lot in this part like repaints do Seems like thanks to that mishap with the key, MD Mason has pulled ahead a little bit, but like you were saying, the fourth world can kind of even it up uh, yes. pretty easily. It's like the one thing we always asked for this game was a level select, so we can practice the, the last phase, the runes. Because every time you need to practice runes, you need to go through all the game just to play that phase once, that stage. We hope we can do a mod on, on PC now, just, just so we can have a level select. It will be a lot easier to practice this game. Uh, I imagine with PC you might be able to figure out some way to do um, backing up the save files, but that's not really realistic for the Switch version at least. The problem with save files in this game is that it saves F at every try, so even if you try just a, a single level, every shine you get, you, you lose your save, so you, it's 
kind of hard to back up it every time, like men. Yeah. But we are looking to it, so it becomes easier to practice this game. Oh, Maison did an interesting strategy there. Just you want one combo to go through all the arena. They are very close now. The EU Winter wins almost at the same time. The last boss is the hardest with Yamato just because of her range. But those two are very experienced for The hardest for spawn points in terms of going to the show. Especially near these doors. Yeah, so you repent doing that thing they were talking about before where you, you pre-spawn the enemies before you're gonna go through with the carry. Kill a couple of them but leave a few alive. Just trying to make that carry coming up a little bit easier. This is the longest carry. key carry. Especially when I was first starting out, this was probably the hardest thing for me to... So before I knew that you can pre-spawn enemies as well. Especially so you got it without any issues. Going for it. Boom, boom, boom. Mason just clearing house. Holy moly. So quick. That's another main reason, like right there. So that room would probably take us, I don't know, five to six seconds longer. Clear house. When you say that Ruins is the hardest one, is it just because of these item carries, or is there other parts that makes it really hard? I would definitely say it's the item carries, but I also find myself um, losing runs to... Especially with uh, more advanced strats. Like here, he's about to, uh, Mason's about to do an orb carry. Um, he's about to also step on a switch. There are three little guys right there that just came up. That's actually a pretty decent spawn, but sometimes they will literally spawn right on your face. That happens more often than not. And also right there with that orb carry uh, by the truck, sometimes they are pretty much surrounding the pillar. You're supposed to drop the orb and to have to manipulate them a little bit. Uh, they will follow you, so you can kind of go in circles a little bit until you can find your way. But um, it's very tricky if you don't pre-spawn them first and then uh, seeing where they are after that. But that all obviously wastes a good amount of time. Try the cuts and skip there. Let's see if we rip into it right. Oh, 
you do that too. I'm assuming picking up that secret there is just because he was low health is a safety thing. I would imagine yeah. so, yes. And he covers his SP too. Ripin, try to do that while in the cutscene to skip the, the carry cuts. I think one of the most terrifying things when I was first starting out were these kill rooms right here because they they just kind of spawned. You never you never knew how many uh, enemies were going to be there. Obviously, your first time playing, and when you find out that the door locks behind you, and then all of these enemies just rush at you, it's very uh, <laughs> it's uh, very intimidating. But both are doing very well in both. Uh, part first stage of the boss to very have, close they have to wait for the arc to, to get close to them if the other two two characters you can just hit them from afar in, in, in the second cycle are uh, the the orb spawns are kind of run. So they have to react to where each each goes. They're getting very early hits here. They took no damage at all. It's a great fight for both of them. Yeah, it looks like Repent made up just a couple seconds on that, though. With Yamato, it's easier to keep hitting him after you do the special, because she keeps spinning and you, hit, you break his shield with the special and keeps hitting his core. So in, in this part it's the easiest to do the boss fight. You you just miss the the hit if, if you can break the shield if you do it a little early or a lot later. last phase of this boss just after the the clapping hands you can hit this mason is a couple of seconds ahead of the event. time is going to be coming up for both of them as soon as they activate the last shrine oh my goodness I don't actually know who touched that first. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. It's actually... Pro I don't know if it's going to come down to the game time, but at the same point, it kind of looks like they tied. Oh my gosh. It, that that was very close. I don't actually know who won that. I don't either. GG's to both runners. Holy cow. This is beyond amazing. I don't think I've ever seen this close of a race before. <laughs>
That's incredible finish. All right, I what's think up? Mason was very slightly faster, but I'm not sure. You guys hit the, the end at basically the same time. Provided how much I messed up and I heard from someone in chat that Mason started first, I'm pretty sure he won. Or not started first, he started after me. Oh, okay. But, uh... So, you're still within a second. Do what? A second. I think so. That was insane. <laughs> what What was your time? Did you time it uh, on your own computer? Do you I was have watching... any splits open? No, I didn't. I didn't use splits. I just wanted to focus on trying my best. I got you. That was an insane race, GG. GG. I don't know who won, but uh, I'm happy <laughs> that we're here, and I'm happy we were able to show it off. Relcon, did it look like a truck? <laughs> Yeah, I, I understood the truck analogy pretty soon, um, just with her barging through enemies, smashing her sword. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty easy to figure out. That was um, it, it it's interesting because like I don't think I in game time is a good measure because like when you do the um, the cut scene skips, it messes up your in game time, right? There are actually That's so bad. many factors that mess with in game time. We don't use it as a yeah. super duper. Right. I did a death, death abuse, um, and that that that's about eight seconds, maybe even ten seconds of in-game time difference right there. Um, yeah, bridge skips if you do it for any cutscene skips whatsoever. Yeah, I missed I missed my bridge skip, so that cost me probably eleven seconds. Uh, <laughs> you, you probably just... you probably did your um your cutscene skip in uh, in ruins. Did you get um, that? No, I actually didn't go for it. I forgot about it. Honestly. Really? I I could have sworn you would have gone for that every day of the week. I was I was really low on health and SP the entirety of Labyrinth and Ruins. Oh my god! Just, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was just like, no. So I had to get some extra SP. I do some extra comboing in order to get the third shrine. Uh, I'll have right, to rewatch uh, it, but uh. Good race. GG's. Do you guys have any shoutouts before we sign out? Anything you want to plug community wise? Uh, shout Just out so to, if you guys want to join. To the Comago Discord. A lot of people just couldn't make it, but um, a lot of people have put time into this game and brought it down, which, um, you know, has made it really easy for me who showed up to the scene pretty late. The resources that were available when I started were probably better than other than like what Repent had. Repent had just come out with a good route with the combos, and I that's how I started off. Um, so just shout outs to everyone who helped come out with resources for this game. Uh, everyone watching, this is a fun game. Um, it's really easy to get into, really easy to pick back up if you um, leave it for a while. So just feel free to join the Discord to um, any of the top runners. I love seeing new runners of this game. 12-hour challenges this weekend. It's a great game to pick up with that. That's how I think that Sanic started with the, with the game. So, hey, Angel, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, join the Discord. They're very, very helpful people. Very lovely, lovely community. It is a great, very... First uh, speed run if you want to try to get into it, how to learn how to live split and all that other stuff. Um, it's very straightforward routing, so it's not like super intricate, but intricate enough to be interesting. Recommend it. Uh, Sanic. I think he might be. You uh, you uh, thank everyone for watching this race. This game, it's a lot of fun to play. Just casually, but it's great to speed run. We welcome. I, I want to thank everyone in the community. I started doing doing runs of this game to, in a 12 hour in chat. And like everyone from the chemical Discord appeared there out of nowhere and started help, helping me out. I want to thank everyone. It's just that. I also wanted to um, 
just point out the uh, the Comico Discord that we have also is a Transa Ruby uh, Discord, which is a game that's supposed to be coming out this year. It's by the same publisher, same developer. It's a two D puzzle platformer, so that that looks very promising. Similar art style. Look out for that. Shout outs to Skip Moore. Shout outs to Can Kikuchi, Fly High Works, Circle Entertainment, all of them for supporting the game. Shout outs to the community. Shout outs to Dresden. He couldn't be here. He had work. Um, one of the very first runners of the game. One of the best for a long time. The game's still very young, so I hope to see more runners. Hopefully we can branch out. And I can't wait to see everybody's runs. Have a good one, everybody. All right. So thanks, everybody who tuned in. And of course, for our runners, Air Angel, MD Mason, Repent MF, and Sanic. Uh, just as a quick overview, we have Sprint tomorrow at 8 p.m. with special guest hosts. Tune in for that. And the Harry Potter birthday celebration is Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Frame Fatale schedule is out. Games Done Quick, Game, Games Done Quick Express game list is out. You can find details on both of those and AGDQ 2020 submissions at GamesDoneQuick.com. And Disability Month submissions are open. You can find the form on our Twitter at GamesDoneQuick. But we are going to toss you over to another stream. We've got my old Mike doing some speed runs. Why don't you go cheer him on? And thanks everybody for watching and please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching today. <laughs>